Hey everybody, we are here in Texas, and it oh, the Earth is on your face, brother. Are you going to see a movie? I can't see you, but I know you're doing something wrong, Josh. Are you are you, are you in danger about? of going blind? Why would I go blind? And why are you wearing like 3D glasses outside? Josh, there's an eclipse. Where? Right there. Oh! It's okay. Like partial right now. Shouldn't you put on these glasses I got you? Um, not yet. Maybe a little bit later. Oh my goodness. Okay, guys, this is Eclipse Day, or I mean, that's what people are calling it. And here in Texas, we are about to witness the sight that everybody says is going to herald the end of the world. I am just like being excited. I've been repenting. Yeah. I'm so ready to get raptured. Okay. I showered this morning. I think it's going to be a good time. Going to be a good day. Well, everybody's saying that this is this is the end of all things. You know. We, it's not everything, but it ain't nothing. I think that's what we should say. It's not, it's something. It does matter. Why don't, we, why don't we do this? There's a lot of things being said, and I know a lot of people either just get mad at it and be like, oh my gosh, blah, 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 or a lot of people are believing some things that aren't accurate. So we wanted to address a few things that we've seen online that people are claiming biblically that just aren't right. Well, first thing I want to uh, touch on is our previous video with Israel Hama talking about the eclipse. There were questions concerning communion in this. People were afraid when we talked about communion. They thought that if they don't take communion every night, that if they die before that communion, they will go to hell. Is that possible? No, and, and let me reassure you, when we talk about these things, we don't ever want you to think that we are making light of what your understanding is or making fun. Uh, in fact, we believe God's put us here to be able to address all the different issues that might come into mind. Maybe it's a deep theological thing that people have argued about for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's just a simple misunderstanding or fear. God wants you to understand his intent. Now, when Israel Hannah talked about that we needed to have uh, communion on a regular basis. We read in the Bible that uh, Paul says that we're supposed to examine our hearts before communion. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to get the sin out. And so part of taking communion would mean then, if we're gonna be intimate with God, that on a regular basis, we're examining our hearts. We're asking the Holy Spirit what sin is in our life. Mm -hmm. And in effect, we are taking control and authority over getting sin out of our life as opposed to just letting it run rampant. Once you've received Jesus, Yeshua, as your Lord and Savior, you're going to heaven. You're set. So that's not the fear. What we want, however, is an intimate relationship with him. And that's why we talk about the importance and value of communion and repenting and examining your life and heart. I like that. That's very good. Another topic I want to talk about just because it, it kind of irks me. It really rubs me the wrong way. Is people online, all these self-proclaimed prophets, false prophets, are declaring this eclipse right there. Oh man, it's like Things have gotten significantly darker. If the screen's darker, this is why the eclipse is beginning. Okay, it's only halfway. They're saying that eclipse is the sign of the prophet Jonah. I have a problem with this. Okay. I'm going to read, or you can read. I want to read for the you. the sign of the prophet Jonah actually is. Because we've heard this a lot, let's yeah. address it in Scripture. Matthew 12, 38 through 41. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. Hmm. Seems pretty self-explanatory what Jesus was talking about when he was speaking about this Jonah here. Well, it's very specific too, because it all has to do with Messiah, Yeshua. And to take an event like the eclipse, this moment in history, which is very minimal compared to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and try to say they're one and the same, I think is blasphemous. It is not one and the same because this three days that Jonah was in the belly of a fish was the sign to the, to the people, yes, to repent. And Yeshua resurrection was signed to people. Yes, he's here. He's the Messiah. It's time to repent. Yes, we believe it's time to repent. We believe that judgment is coming to America and Israel. But that thing isn't the sign of the prophet Jonah. It's not. Now, God did give us the sun and the moon and the stars, and he say that there would be signs that we could derive from that, it. That is true. He did say That's that. True. We look in Genesis 1.14, it says, Then God said, Let the lights in the expanse mm -hmm. of the sky be for separating the day from night. They will be for signs and for seasons, the Moedim, mm -hmm. and for days and for years. Mm -hmm. Well, most people say that this eclipse now is possibly the fulfillment of Joel chapter 2. Mm -hmm. You know, the great and terrible day of the Lord that we read so many times in Scripture is associated with the sun turning black, the moon turning to blood. Well, let's see exactly how that's described in Joel 
2.31. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The moon's not really bloody. I don't see any blood moon. Well, I'm not supposed to look at it. It's almost black right there, but, but there's a few more details that are accompanied by this in yep. Revelation chapter 6, Josh. So Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 through 14 says, mm -hmm. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth mm -hmm. made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to the earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. Mm -hmm. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. We don't live in an island, but I don't see any islands being removed from their place right now. This is pretty gnarly, guys. This is what happens at the end of the tribulation, you know, right before that battle of Armageddon, and everything's flat, and we're talking about a world that is nearly in and uninhabitable, mm -hmm. because we have half of the population has perished at this point. We know people say every day, we read their comments, the first five seals have been open, you know, we've heard the first three trumpets. I call shenanigans on that, guys, because if that were the case, then a fourth of the population of the world would have been destroyed by the first five seals. That's two billion people. We're not digging graves for two billion people right now. COVID did not kill two billion people. That means if you're a family of four, one person perish. That's why we created the series. The last episode is actually airing this week called The Roadmap to Again. If you haven't been watching it, we encourage you to watch it because God wants you to know the chronological timetable of events that must occur before the end comes. So we do not believe we're in the tribulation now. But another important point that we want to focus on is the people that lurch the complete opposite end of the spectrum where they say this is not a sign at all this is sun worship this is idolatry you can't look to any heavens for any signs whatsoever and I, I think we need to talk about that because there is bad things in horoscopes and yes, astrology and all those things um but obviously there is a case there's a situation that you can't deny in the bible when there was magi there was wise men who came from the east they followed a star to find baby yeshua these wise men were Chaldeans. Mm. They were taught uh, all the way back hundreds of years by the prophet Daniel. He actually became the head of these Chaldeans. And yes, there was astrology, there was mysticism in the occult LinkedIn. So let's look at uh, the different uh, Definition. wrong, wrong definitions of these positions we do not want to follow. Um, I say one right here, hard to mean. That's how you say that? <laughs> if you, if you a good spit there. there. Too mean. These are wise men or sacred scribes. Uh, this was the name of the wise men in Moses' day, you know, who threw down the rod and they turned into a serpent. However, wise men, the Chaldeans of Daniel's day, these are also sacred writers, spirit writers. These people had demonic entities uh, indwell them and they had power to write uh, horoscopes, the future, uh, like the Ouija board. I was about to say, that sounds very familiar to a little game that you can pick up at your local Walmart or Target oh, for about terrible. $20 called the Ouija board. <laughs> See, when people have dabbled in these things as kids and have all these stories about saying, oh, it, mm -hmm. was, it was scary, it was funny, it was simple, that's not just some simple little game. Mm -hmm. That is the enemy trying to open the door to you to these very ancient forms of witchcraft yeah. and magic that are very deep and very real and you don't want to get involved in that scripture says don't do it so another type of uh man i'm going to mispronounce this another type of wise man is the type that we refer to as a wise man or a wizard yeah. and that is haka hakamimim haka haka kamim haka kamim haka anyways <laughs> these guys they were pretty bad obviously yeah. they dabbled in sorcery they were using uh drugs to enhance these uh these periods of euphoria where they could speak to the gods beyond and they could get revelation from demons and spirits. Those are a bad group. We know that in um, the astrologers, what we want to focus on, astrologers, stargazers, heaven dividers, horoscope predictors. In Hebrew, these are the Gasrin, the Hobre Shamaim, the Chuzim, Barakop Habim, Modim, Lekodashim. All of them. Probably got them all wrong. Anyways, guys, uh, these guys studied the heavens, the stars, to get that wisdom, to foretell the future. They looked for omens in the heavens uh, to try to tell them the future events, to see, you know, if an important person was about to be born, if an apocalypse is coming, you know, if they would have rain this season, all these different things they trusted in the heavens instead of the creator for that. Now, God did say, like Josh read, that we are to see the signs in the heavens, but we're supposed to focus on the sign maker. 
He's the one who is, is the master of all these things. Um, you look at Deuteronomy 419 and it says mm -hmm. this, and when you look up at the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, all the heavenly array, do not be enticed into bowing down mm -hmm. to them and worshiping things. The Lord your God has apportioned to all nations under heaven. Yeah. So when we're looking at this again, you've heard a lot of big names. You've heard a lot of uh, different titles and things that is easy to mark off your list and go, okay, that's above my pay grade. I'm not even dealing with that on a regular basis. It, it boils down to this simple concept. You worship and focus on the creator Creator, not the things he created. Yeah. All of this around us that he's given us, the stars and the heaven, the moon, they're all beautiful, amazing things. Are there things that we can derive from them? Signs that we can see, things that we can pay attention to? Of course. But what should our focus be on mm. to learn about him? Right. The Father. Your focus should be primarily on the Father to learn about the Father. These are all secondary things. Yes. And that's why he said it's a perverse generation to ask for signs. Don't ask for a sign, ask for him. He gave you a direct link, a relationship with him to where you could go boldly before the throne mm. and make your request known unto him. So how are we going, well, just show us a sign so we'll know that you're real and you're cool and all this stuff when we can just go straight to him. And guys, it is insidious, it is sinister to study and focus on all these new age concepts of astrology and such. It is dangerous because you have to understand that fallen angels associate themselves with the planets. Ever since the beginning with Nimrod, the very first uh, pagan religion was started, there were gods and goddesses and they were associated with the sun, the moon, and the stars. You look at Greek and Roman mythology, you had you know Mars, Jupiter, Venus. They were associated with the planets because they were uh, territorial principalities, these fallen angels that represented those planets. So when they bowed to those planets, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they were bowing to fallen angels, to demon spirits. We don't want to do that. So it is very serious not to follow after that. Um, Isaiah 37, 13 through 14 warns us, all the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. Well, they can't save you. They can't foretell you the future. Only God knows the future. Isaiah 44, 24 through 25 says, mm -hmm. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the sign of the babblers and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness. Mm -hmm. So again, today, yeah. on this day of this eclipse, where people from around the world, we were even told in Texas here that we should prepare as though it was a incoming hurricane or tornado because yeah. there would be such an influx of people. We needed to buy food and buy gas because today's generation wants to be get all the feels. That's what they yeah. call it, right? They want to feel the tingly sensation of something that, that gets our senses going. But our job is to focus on Him. So today, watch it with your family safely. Put your goggles on so that your retinas don't burn out and, and enjoy the moment, but enjoy it from saying, look what my Father made. Look at the grandeur of His creation. Mm -hmm. I want to know Him more so that in the time comes when it's time for him to come back for me. Not only am I part of his sheep, but I am ready and prepared and fully ready to go up to be with him. And that's what it all matters. It's all about having your heart prepared for the coming of Yeshua because he is coming soon, guys. Matthew 24 gave us the birth pangs, these warning signs that we are to look for before the tribulation begins. Earthquakes was one of them. Signs in the heavens was one of them. You've seen all the earthquakes happening around uh, lately in these diverse places. Those are signs of Yeshua's coming return. But this eclipse itself on this day, it probably won't happen, Josh, that it will be the wrap. You're going to finish your... Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh no. No. Kirk Cameron, how do you know everything? Why are we raptured naked and why am I? Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, yeah, I peeked at it. I looked at it. I didn't have my glasses on, but why didn't I get raptured? Hey, I was. Oh my God! Oh. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? <laughs> you didn't get raptured. I'm not the worst brother. I'm trying to get raptured. You got stuck here too. <laughs> we got both got stuck here. We're gonna have to go through the tribulation and everything together. But at least we're gonna be together. I had to get a drink from the vendor truck. They were selling like cool eclipse snow cones. So yeah. You mean there was no rapture after all? No, Josh. <laughs> Internet prophets. <laughs> don't don't be mad at me. I love you. <laughs>